Welcome back. So, um, yeah, it occurred to me just this morning in talking with folks, uh, who, uh, players of the game of Shogi, uh, both in Shogi Harbor's Discord and players who just play on Lee Shogi, and, um, they were able to direct me to this one gentleman's, uh, Discord, uh, this gentleman by the name of 95 Horatio. Uh, apparently is a live streamer. Um, I just now found out about this, so I'm probably way behind the curve. But I think I'll do a brief code review of what I've done in anticipation of whatever research he's working on that is far superior to what Salidas I have accomplished. Um, so what I wrote here four years ago is a very simple function that can take a forsyth edwards notation position for chess and turn it into a mask of ones and zeros and the code's all here you can read it yourself i did not give very elaborate usage because nobody has expressed interest in this and maybe that's a circular problem but also I didn't expect this to go very far at all. Um, but yeah, here's a Forsyth Edwards notation representation of a chess position where a8 contains a rook, b8 contains a knight. There are three empty squares on the back rank. Uh, then f8 contains a rook, g8 contains a king, and the h8, king, uh, h8 square is empty. And then the next rank is four empty squares and then a bishop on e7 etc this is a very common way for chess programs to represent a position it's actually fairly easy to key this in uh, you can get the hang of this pretty quickly um, or at least it's easier to learn than other things like morse code which you don't need to know these days but people were trained on morse code people could be trained on Forsyth Edwards notation and quickly enter positions, and that learning curve is not so bad. If you are publishing a chess magazine or online journal or something, you could learn this notation. You could learn how to generate positions. Let me zoom in. Silly me. Silly, silly me. I should have zoomed in this entire time. But, um, yeah, you can learn to understand this particular way of encoding a chess position. Um, so I'm able to actually fit almost all this onto one slide here. But the idea is that I take all the eights and turn it into space seven, all, every seven replace it with space six, etc. So I take each digit and replace it with the correct number of spaces. And then uh, we take every square that does not contain a zero or a pawn every non-pawn becomes a zero every pawn becomes a one and every one of these characters the slashes um, become a empty i'm sorry they split this into eight ranks and then having eight of these ranks um we generate the white pawns as one bit mask, the black pawns as another bit mask, and then we take this set of eight ranks and rotate it. Um, so shift the white pawns up a rank, shift the black pawns down a rank. Um, then what is this W pawns one? I'm trying to remember. <sighs> Takes pawns A joins all the ranks together, splits on something. Um, what's the split for? Oh, splits every character. So it takes this, after having put it into eight data structures, combines that back into a singular data structure without any of the slashes contained in it anymore. And then we'll map all the ones and zeros uh, to actual bits uh, or 
digits or something. I think to bits. So we'll have a binary 1 and a binary 0. Then we have a 64-bit mask. There's the white pawns 1 for w pawns a. And we have ditto for w pawns 2 is another 64-bit mask. And then we take the two masks and sum them together or something. I don't remember. But basically, this is a hack that will produce some 32 byte? I don't know, produce some kind of mask. And this mask, you take any two FEN strings, feed them into this function to encode um, uh, whatever the position is as a bit mask. And you bit ma bitwise and this, the result of the one position and the result of the other position together, you bitwise and them together to get a similarity score. So technically speaking, this is an encoding function. This is not an index. Um, I don't think it's an index, is it? Well, yeah, it's a computed index. So you can bitwise, it's a computed index that has a special property that you can bitwise and it with another computed index together to determine how similar positions are. And I should have documented this, and maybe this program would have drawn more interest had I done so. Um, so, anyway. Um, let's see. Shogi Pawn Encoder is my new object here, or objective. And by that, I mean, I think I want to write something similar to this. Um, right. I don't even remember. I know I have to do one quick thing before I can show you all the code that I'm looking at. Uh... And that is figure out on which machine did I even have my workspace for this. Per oh, I don't have this code anymore. All right, I'll need to create a workspace. That's fine. And then I will share this. Let me show you everything I'm looking at, not just the browser. All right, so um, let's take this just... I mean, I could just copy it this way. I don't need to see the raw format. On encoder.rb, paste it. There it is. Usage. Uh, just boom. There we go. There's a bit mask. So, um, and then if I were to change the position to, I don't know, take out some of these pawns here. Uh, so if I make this just an 8, we would get a different pawn mask. And if I were to... How do I bitwise and? I can't do that with BC. The... Hmm. I don't know. But you can see, like, here's a bitwise string, and here's another bitwise string, and they're similar. But they have some, like, 1s and zeros that are ever so slightly different. So I don't know how you compute the... I need to figure out this stupid little step at the end. Because that makes the program practical to use. Um, so, uh, Ubuntu bitwise and. Can't spell bitwise. All right. Huh? Okay. Terminal-based bit manipulator and end curses. All right. No, we don't need this. Um, so do we have bitwise installed? Uh, so let's see. Now we have bitwise installed, maybe. Bitwise. Woo! All right, that's insane. All right, and then we can put in an expression. I wonder... 
So bitwise this and that. Okay, I can't exactly read that, unfortunately. Um, but, hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure that I could actually do the binary math in the terminal, but this encoding function should be useful to, for detecting similarity of two positions based on the white pawns as a slice and the black pawns as a slice. Because we know that pawns on a chessboard appear, um, I guess I'll show you. Um, we know that white pawns can appear in these top seven ranks and black pawns can appear in the bottom seven ranks. And that's how in chess it works. Uh, so I just, goodness, we've got so many other things going on here. Uh, encoder, move pawn encoder into encoder. All right, so probably want to keep around yeah, here's my original test. Oh, well, that's delightful. It's missing half of my input. Let's try that again. All right, and hop back here. Uh, CH mod. Yeah, we've got all kinds of stuff we're leaking today. But yeah, there's our test. Um, and so I can take this test and augment it to handle. Well, let's take this position. Uh, it's the canonical chess position with all pieces in their original squares. Oh. Uh, we do not require the last four. I'm forgetting how to navigate left and right in Vim. It's dollar to navigate right. But yeah, there's our canonical position. Here's just some random position. We do a test. Those are our test outputs. So my purpose with doing this demonstration is not so much to show that off, cause even though that's fun. You know what's even more fun? <laughs> Shogi. Yeah. Here is a representation of a Shogi position. And this piece here, that's the pawn. Um, so yeah, this pawn could advance up these ranks. Technically a pawn could surface all the way back here and advance up this far and the pawn could go down this far. So we're talking about something that is not 64 bits here. We're talking that white has pawns on nine files, each of which could be um, a one of eight different squares. Um, so in terms of combinatorics, you could either, on a file, have no pawn, or the pawn could be on square 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Um, so that's nine possibilities for nine files, which um, nine to the power of nine. This I know how to do. Nine, star, star, nine. No, nine, power nine. Yeah, okay. So this is the number of possible pawn structures for unpromoted pawns in Shogi. Um, if you were to take a pawn and, well, yeah, you could place it on any one of these eight squares or the file could have no pawn on it. 
<clears throat> so I'm trying to think. Is there anything? Well, no, I, instead of coming up with the perfect plan up front, let's do an agile approach to this. Um, and yeah, so copy chess to shogi.rb. And test.sh ruby shogi rb and give it this thing, which is just ever so slightly different. Um, yeah, we don't need whose player whose play it is to move or any kind of confusing information like that. Um, let's also just comment out the first two tests for now. So this is what the encoder does. Is this even remotely accurate? Probably not. Or even remotely useful is what I meant to say. So a rank, first of all, could contain nine spaces instead of eight. So let's take a nine and replace that with space eight. All right. Um, is that really all there is to it? No, because this join slice. Good God. I don't remember what half the shit is here for. But okay, we got a different encoding now. That's cool. Alright, W pawns map. Alright, so maybe I should take out some of this rotation. That's just going to confuse me. Oh, this is not the rotation. This is the rotation code. Um, and we're going to also remove the references to pawns B, the rotated masks. And also do any, remove any of this zipping stuff. Right? No. Okay, yeah, that's fine. What does this look like? Kaboom! Alright, did you mean one of these things? Probably. There's a chance that I meant one of these things. Um, wait, what? Line 20 from line 23. Alright, line 20 is this thing. W pawns map I to string. Um, what's the deal here, though? All right, well, um, this is truly mad science. Oh, sorry. This is what I meant to say. Coding mad science in progress. Stuff without a plan. Stuff where we just, I mean, we have some notion of a plan, but it's just not going to work. Um... So this is some encoding of this position. As for why that differs from this other thing, fuck if I know. Um, so I to S join slice, etc. Um, join slice twenty four thirty two. This is saying take 32 characters starting from 24. No. Um, all right, let's simplify this a lot. Compose this by parts. So first, let's just take, uh, in fact, let's take the black Pawns, which we said was 8 and 32. Just print that out. Black pawns. Now, what does this mean? I see 0, 0, 0. I think that's 9 zeros and then 9 ones. I think. Or maybe that's 10 zeros at the beginning. Let's find out. 
So if, instead of saying 9 and 32, what if I say 9 and 36? Uh, let's shift it left one character. Um, oh, I know what I could do. Um, I could manipulate the input. This does not have to be a valid shogi position. So instead of a lance back here, what if I stuck a pawn where the lance was? I wonder if I stuck the lance where the pawn is. Um, and for reference, what that position would look like. I'm trying to select this without the quotes. What this could look like is that. <clears throat> yeah, okay. So see how I've changed the position of the pawn and the lance. Um, so, unlike chess, there's no requirement that things have to be, pawns have to be off the first rank. Uh, okay, so this upper left corner is, well, yeah. So there's my one. Now you can see there's a bunch of zeros and then some more ones over here. Um, so at what point, I would say that a pawn, a pawn for black within this section of the board is relevant to an opening classification in Shogi. That if I'm trying to figure out what opening have I just played, that is pawns inside this section of the board have an influence. No, that's not right. Openings, there could be pawns on the top rank, but for opening classification purposes, I care about pawns located here. Yeah. So I do actually want to skip the top rank of the board, which are nine characters and select the ranks below. Yeah, I think that... And then symmetrically, what does that mean over here? We're still selecting 36 characters, but 24... What was the 24 up, <laughs> up way up here for? What was this 24 in offset to represent? I don't recall. Oh. Okay, yeah. yeah. So we were wanting to ignore the upper three ranks. Of, okay, let me visualize it this way. In chess, we would want to rope off the top three ranks. In shogi, um, for black pawns, we don't care about them located... Uh, for opening classification purposes, discard the top four ranks and pay attention to the following 36 squares instead of 32. All right, and then I want to take these two. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's one other fun aspect to this. Um, and that's that my notion of white and black are completely backwards here. Um, pawn with W pawn. Um, we're going to take B pawn and replace that with W pawn. And then we're going to take W pawn, turn that into B pawn. There we go. So we've reversed our definitions of white and black here because black is on the bottom half of the diagram because black moves first in shogi. Oh, and then this. Let's take a legitimate shogi position, not the thing I just set up here. Uh, there we go, and then this is called an S fen, right? Yeah. Shogi fen. 
Why is the board editor for chess that you can put more than nine queens, but you cannot put a white pawn on the first rank? Um, it's because chess engines do not support white pawns on the first rank. <sighs> Namely, my particular engine that I deployed on Lee Chess, um, as well as the official uh, coding Lee Shogi. Not exactly. We are. I'm taking an idea that's four years old and building upon it. Um, so actually, let's just throw it all together and just hope it works. Um, but yeah, I'm taking some thing that I used for chess to encode whether you're playing the French defense or the London opening or like anything based on pawn structure. Um, and I'm doing the same thing for Shogi, where, based on if you have pawns located here, or maybe your pawns are up like that a bit, or, I don't know, perhaps you've played this one up. Like, depending on how you've shaped your pawns, we can create a bitwise mask. Um, wait, did that actually call this code? And I called shogi.rb. Shogi.rb is what I just edited. Oh, right, I'm missing the join at the end of the line. Um, it's based on chess.rb. Yeah, I just want to call join to put those two values together as a single composite index. But you can just bitwise and any two encoded positions together and see like their similarity score. So here's a 72 character index representing this position. And if I just like watch a game on Shogi TV here and say, okay, here's a previous and I don't know how far I go, 20 moves into the game. This is an opening position. Um, so I can just copy this here. And see, like, what opening is this? Whoops. Haste. Get rid of all the uh, trailing characters. And so we see here's like a bit mask and another bit mask. And you can see they're kind of similar, kind of different. And you could compare this bit mask to, I don't know, here we got. We've got a game in progress, right? Uh, can I have access to older games, perhaps? Alright, that looks like a game. If I go 20 moves into this, I can download that. And we can see if this is similar or different than the other positions. So, coding Lee Shogi would not so much, but coding something that could be used by everyone to determine is this position more similar to the first or to the second? Yeah. This is kind of similar, kind of different. Um, in chess, on Lee Chess, folks have been asking for ECO codes, and I think what they mean is they don't really care about ECO codes. What they want is to know if somebody's playing the French defense, or if somebody's playing uh, some opening or some defense, and like the ECO classification system is fucked. So it's useful, but it's super difficult to work with. So, um, yeah, how does this help? So instead of comparing, like, here we've got all these English characters, uh, or you could encode this in some other language, but here you have this string of characters, and I'm producing another string of characters, something that's easier to do bitwise math on although I don't have a bitwise math tool at present. You could just take one of these, take another one of these, and um, bitwise and them together and figure out uh, that it has a 90% similarity score. So these two were the same opening. They have a 20% similarity score. So these are different openings. 
that sort of thing. Perhaps something much more intelligent could be done with this. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just truly the dumbest possible encoding function I could think of. Uh, or simplest, or whatever you want to phrase it. So I'll upload this to uh, a GitHub gist. Um, but yeah, this takes all the nines and eights and all the numbers, puts the spaces. Uh, instead of having numbers there, we have spaces, and then determines which squares contain pawns and which don't. Um, now you could create other masks for, like, where are my lances located? Where are my knights located? Where are my other pieces? But pawns are hardest to move backwards. Uh, so that's why I started with pawns here. This is just like, um, so the point of this rotate function is to pretend that a pawn, oh, okay, something curious happened here. Um, let me compare this. Yeah, something most strange happened on that rotate operation. Let's go back here. Um, so, I am wanting to take this minus one and apply it on white pawns instead of black pawns. Uh, I'm not sure what happened to all the other variable names. Um... That is super weird. Possibly some of my find and replacement has gone completely bonkers and needs to be fixed. Um, let me fix that. So here we've got all these operations. Uh, there we are. So let me take white pawns like this, black pawns, black pawns, white pawns, etc. That replaces all this code that I just scratched together. There we go. So this time with fewer bugs. Um, yeah, we take the black pawns and shift them down, up. I don't even know which direction. Uh, let me think about this. Um, the rotate operation will take an array and shift it to the right. The top of the board is the left. So yeah, this is a safe operation that will shift pawns to the right. Because black pawns, I'm sorry, black pawns can occupy um, this section of the board. Black pawns cannot, I'm sorry, white pawns cannot have moved to the bottom rank. So we're going to take all the black pawns. Let me double check what I just did here. Um... White pawns is equal to white pawns rotate. So in chess, you would normally, oh my goodness. Um, yeah, no, this is not a safe operation anymore. Uh, it has to be like this. That's funny. So uh, shift black pawns down a rank, and white pawns up a rank. Uh, no, I, have the, I explained it backwards again. Um,
So, um, yeah, that's the notion here. And then this next step, um, replace, uh, hmm, <laughs> replace one with one. Uh, replace one with one. Um, replace on with one and uh, on with one. There we go. So that's what's going on here. Um, average um, the shifted and unshifted on masks. Uh, and catenate index. Uh, which do, 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 has the property that bitwise and computes similarity uh, better than, uh, well, instead of relying upon an ECO code. Transposition table. So that's what we're dealing with here. Let me fit this back on one slide again. That's what we got done. So, I'm sure there are questions, um, yeah, probably I don't need so many comments in here. Um, but that's honestly not that hard to understand what this is doing. I tried to write, uh, aside from this ridiculous G-sub thing that was just a hack, all of this is a hack. Surely there's a more performant way to write every aspect of this. Um, but, you know. Uh, let's see. Uh, Bitwise and comparable index uh, there we go easy peasy so we've documented this um honestly at this point the next step is I mean, here's my test script, right? You can see, um, I don't know if I need more output in here somehow, but uh, here, test, mission accomplished. Those are our bitwise representations of these positions, I guess, for documentation purposes. We'll dump out the position here. 
But yeah, mission accomplished, really. This is a hack, but that's not a bad thing. Uh, it just means that the next person can do better. Um, and for ease of reading this, let's print it out like that. And run this again. So potentially this could be used to index positions or games into some database. Could be used to compare whether two games have the same position or not. Uh, could be used to compare whether this position here, if this is similar or if this is different from this position here. I would argue that this here and this here look pretty similar. Um, okay, my back button did something fun, but still. So, um, I'm not actually doing the computation of the similarity score. Um, so next, uh, let's take a look at our shogi.rb and post it on GitHub. Really, there's nothing left to do other than share our findings with the world. So, do, 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 do. Uh, we want to create a gist, wherever the button to create that is. Where's my button to create a gist? I, I don't know how this works. I should know, um, but I've not lived in here. So, I don't know. Is there some better way to publish a gist? Paul gists back to GitHub. Plus button. There we go. All right. And then over here, um, shogi pawn encoder dot rb description. Yeah, there we go. No. Copy selected text. Paste it. Create public gist. Publish that. There we go. Mission accomplished. So we'll just share this thing, this gem with the world. Anybody can run this. Uh, maybe I should create a separate GitHub repository instead of just a gist. If I want to, like, I don't know, have some interactive test or something for this. But yeah, we've made the magic things which indexes every shogi position ever and compares shogi positions so you can know whether or not positions are the same. So, mission accomplished. Um, is that going to be part of the Lee Shogi platform? I doubt it. Is this a tool that everyone can and should and will use? Yes. Uh, so, um, at least until something better comes along. Yeah. Mission accomplished. See? Aim low and um, you'll at least get your thing. Uh, you'll achieve your objectives. Um, so... Yeah, I know, like, this is a bit different than the way things would work at a, a research institution, where you would, like, set out a proposal for grant money, and, like, either the proposal will be accepted or declined, you have this tremendous overhead associated with that. Here, I just, like, yeah, I'm going to hack this together. It works, it runs, anybody can run it. Anybody, feel free to produce a better form of this. Um, maybe if I misspelled something, or like there's some more compelling way to present this, by all means. But still, yeah, it's now public 19 seconds ago. So, yeah, I'll share this around various discords and see if anybody takes more excitement or interest in this now that I've actually documented it. I think in chess, the fact that pawns cannot move backwards is not the end of the world. In shogi, the fact that pawns cannot move backward 
Oh my god, that changes so much. <laughs> um, yeah, this Lee Shogi, I don't know. At one point it was, at this point it's using fairy stockfish. Who knows? Um, um, no, fairy stockfish handles more positions. Uh, I did spend numerous streams improving Yanuera's build system so we could get powerful, reliable builds that work for various architectures. They have composable builds, is what I meant to say, not powerful, compo composable scripts where um, we're able to take each individual unit, test it separately, compose them together, and test the whole and do the same thing across Android, iOS, Linux, Windows, every platform. Um, I think the maintainer appreciated my contribution there because honestly, like on Ubuntu, I was having the hardest time building the thing. And so having an open source build system that actually works and tests everything i think should be a tremendous benefit to them and to the shogi community as a whole that said um fairy stockfish i still think is the future so um eventually it'll catch up it's just a matter of time but also has the benefit that it handles quite a few positions that uh oh i'm sorry in chess um uh, some of these special engines that are not hell-bent on performance uh, but actually uh, uh, handle irregular positions like things where you'd have I don't know uh, 18 tokens on the board and eight promoted pieces or something like Stuff that will never come up in a real game, but could show up on Lee Shogi. Hopefully are better handled by uh, Fairy Stockfish than would be handled by just an off-the-shelf, extremely strong world champion engine. Um, uh, you know, Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. And I challenge you. Yes, you personally, to make that. Um, that's my challenge to you. <laughs> um, no, seriously, I'm out of that business. Like, without a funding model, I'm not doing that kind of stuff again. It was fun to do once. Once was enough. No, I'm challenging you. No excuses. All right, how many Lee branches exist at the moment? Um, there, branch might not be a perfect. Okay. Um. Huh. Huh. Um. No, I think you're right. Bouncing across that those, in terms of actual code that came from Lee Chess. I think those are the three popular ones. Um, I'm not aware of other ones existing for other games. At one point I had collaborated, no, I had installed a work by N. Holbert. I don't recall their real name, but their GitHub name was N. Holbert. They had produced a version of Leechess. Uh, Lee that played a variant that was called Flick Chess, F-L-I-C-K Chess. Um, so, yeah, uh, Lee Kernel, what to call it? Um, no, I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, no, you're right, branch is the term. Yeah. It took a minute for me. There were two different ways I could have parsed your question. It occurred to me, like, no, what you're really asking is not about Lee words. It's not about other Lee sites that we do endorse and enjoy. Or at least I endorse and enjoy. Um, but no, branch is accurate. 
Um, I just misparsed the question. That's my fault. Um, branch is the correct designator. Yeah. I misparsed the question, did not realize that uh, we were talking at such a technical level there. So, um, yeah, I think those are the three branches are Lee Chess, Lee Drafts, Lee Shogi. All right, I don't know how to conclude this segment, but I'll just say this uh, here. Yeah, I'll share this with the world, see what people think about it. Hopefully find more collaboration and excitement about this particular thing than I found. Um, like with chess, the problem was kind of solved already in the form of having these ECO encyclopedia of chess opening codes where you could just look up this table and this table was growing immensely, but uh, in Shogi, the transpositions are just too immense to enumerate, so um, this ECO approach will not succeed uh, for Shogi. You cannot possibly classify every move order. There are just too many. In chess, that problem's tractable. Here, it's really not tractable that same way. You need some other way of thinking about encoding positions, so hopefully there will be excitement about this. I'm optimistic. Um, yeah, in my previous research efforts, I attempted to write a Python program that would just read in the moves of a shogi game and do the same thing that we do for chess. And after a while, I gave up on that. Um, and I'm surprised it's taken me more or less exactly a year to come up with the same idea that, like, I had four years ago for chess. It makes so much more sense in shogi so that's exciting